XFCE is one of the leanest desktop environments out there. You'll typically find that the RAM usage in XFCE is lower compared to most other desktops, and you'll certainly find that it's much lighter than Windows 10, as you can see with my NeoFetch output, an XFCE desktop only uses a couple hundred megabytes of RAM, 10 times less than a Windows 10 desktop, while still having a familiar look and feel and not having to do something crazy out of this world and scary to newbies like using a window manager. Now, not all XFCE desktops are created equally. Some are a bit more bloated than this, but since I'm on Gen 2, I'm able to set up an XFCE desktop in a fairly minimal way without having to include a bunch of extra crap that bloats up our system. So this is a good option for somebody who is looking to have a minimal desktop without going into window manager territory. So I'm gonna show you how to set up a desktop like this on Gentoo, and you can pretty much use this guide for any other distro as well. Uh, some of the steps, or a lot of the steps really, like starting XFCE with Xenit is going to be the same on other distros like Arch and Artix. One thing that I will say is if you're thinking of using this to set up a minimal desktop on low spec hardware, maybe you had some hardware that was running Windows 7 or some older version of Windows, but it's not able to handle Windows 10, um, I suspect that this is what a lot of the people interested in this video are gonna be doing. You might not want to use Gentoo if that system has a weak CPU, because with Gentoo, obviously we're compiling everything and you're gonna have much longer compile times with a weak CPU. Unless you're using uh, DiscCC, if you've got that set up with some other computers on your network that can handle the heavy lifting of compiling packages, uh, then it's going to be good. But if that's not the case, you're going to be better off setting this up on a binary distro like Artix. Anyway, let's begin with the setup. So the first thing which is Gen 2 specific and also completely optional is setting your profile and your use flag. If we do eselect profile list, then we can see a list of all the different profiles that are offered to us. Um, and basically what a portage profile does is it specifies a default state of global and per package use flags default values for most variables found in the make.conf and it defines a set of system packages. It can also force the use flags to be unconditionally set or unset either globally or for the architecture's stable branch or on a per package basis. So the default use or the default profile for Gentoo is this one right here, the default Linux AMD64 stable. The one that you might want to set for XFCE um, or pretty much for any other desktop unless you're specifically using something like Plasma or GNOME is going to be this one, the default Linux AMD64 desktop. Now, like I said, this is something that is completely optional. As you can see on my system, I'm using the hardened profile and the reason that I'm doing this is because I personally value security more than I do, I guess you would call it extreme minimalism. So I'd rather get those different settings and those different use flags that are provided by Hardened to make my system more secure. So you can go ahead and pick it whichever way you want to set it up. Uh, again, desktop profile, not necessary. And then as far as use flags go, um, this particular package here, the app text poplar package, you can unset the Qt5 use flag. Um, you don't have to set the Cairo use flag. I believe I had that set up for, um, it was either some specific package I was using or it might have been, no, it wasn't a DWM thing. Not entirely sure why I had Cairo set, but you can unset Qt5 for this particular package. It's not necessary because when you pull in um, XFCE by default, it's going to have that set. So you could do it here or you could do it in your make.conf to just globally unset this. 
And then we're going to begin with the installation of XFCE. And there's really only two necessary packages. Um, there's a certain extra package you can install for notifications, but if you don't want that, if you just want to basically get an XFCE desktop like I have here, then all you need are these two. So it's the XFCE base XFWM4 and the XFCE base XFCE panel. And I've got the uh, web pages open for both of them here. So as you can see, um, there's a couple of use flags that you can set for them. Uh, again, these ones aren't going to be default set. You have to specify them on these packages. And both of them, their latest versions are considered unstable on AMD64. So of course, if you want to have the latest and greatest version of XFWM4 or XFCE panel, then you're going to have to unmask them in your package.accept keywords. And now that I think about it, the panel might not even be required. If you just want to have, say, a floating window like this that you can click on and move, uh, you could probably just go ahead and use the uh, XFWM4 because basically that functionality is just provided by the window manager. Um, and then I guess you could use Polybar or DWM or some other uh, thing to have the panel or not even use a panel at all, right? If you're trying to be uber minimalist, you could just launch everything from a terminal. But uh, I think people who are trying to do that are probably going to run DWM or some other type of window manager anyway. So go ahead and install this. Um, and like I said, unmask it to have the latest versions. And then once your installation has finished, the final step is going to be to add XFCE to your Exinit RC. So just one line that you have to add to it, exec start XFCE4, and then go ahead and save that. And um, once you've got all of that done, then you can go ahead and launch it if you were following this tutorial from a TTY. If you already had a different window manager or a different desktop environment set up when you're following this tutorial, then you'll want to quit out of it. Uh, of course, close all your applications first, save them, do all that good stuff, and then bring down your X server and restart it, and then you're going to be in XFCE. And as far as configuring XFCE goes, there is a settings manager uh, up here in the taskbar. So come up to applications, go to settings, setting manager. And from here, you can go ahead and basically configure everything that you would need for your desktop. Uh, one of the things I had to do was in display. So I had to set my screens up to uh, basically be right next to each other the way that they actually are in real space. Because for whatever reason, uh, my displays always get out of order. I probably don't have them plugged into the right order of ports into my graphics card. But yeah, you can just do that and then you can move them around um, like this and then put them where they want to go. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do that because then it's going to screw up my configuration. So you can do that. And then uh, there's other settings that you can mess around with in here. Um, I think I've gone over this a little bit with... Um, with some of the other XFCE skins that I've done. And of course, you can apply any type of XFCE skin now that you actually have it installed. So if you wanna do like the Windows 2000 skin or the Windows XP skin, uh, I've got videos of both of those on my channel. So you can check them out if you're trying to really make XFCE look like Windows, but obviously uh, you'll know. You'll know deep down that you're running something a whole lot better and it just looks like windows on the surface. So as always, I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it so that others can benefit from it as well. And also subscribe with notifications on so that you know when new content is released. Bye now.